If you download and install Python from the Python website and then open idle, uh, this is what you see at first. I'm using Python uh, 2 here, but the process is the same in Python 3. And where I'm aware of differences between the two, I'll try and point them out. So the first thing you see is this sort of immediate mode where you can type in commands uh, one at a time and see what they do. So if I type in uh, print hello, for example, I'll be able to see um, what that does. Um, I can also do things like uh, assign values to variables, and all of these things we'll cover in future uh, videos. It also uh, suggests um, syntax. So when I've typed in type there and open the brackets, it's given me a little bit of help. Um, so I can... Uh, do all of the things that you would expect to do in Python but one at a time. So if I want to write a program involving uh, multiple lines of code or multiple commands I need to do that in a new file. So if I go to the file menu and choose new file uh, what appears is a notepad style editor in to which I can type uh, the lines of my program. So um, I can type in comments so I'm going to put in a uh, a comment as a header. So a comment is a non-functional line in your program which reminds you what the program does but also if you're building an application in a team it helps other people to understand what you've been doing. They begin with a hash or a sharp symbol in the Python programming language and then it's traditional for your first program in any programming language to say hello world so I'll type in hello world so that's a program that does that. So before you run a program in idle, um, it does want you to save it. So it will remind you if you try and run it, but I'm just going to uh, save it explicitly here. So I'm going to save it into my desktop because it will try and save it into your uh, Python folder by default. Um, one quirk of idle is that it doesn't put the py extension on the end of your file name. So you need to put that in yourself if you want to be able to click the right button and edit with idle or if you want to double click your program to run it. Uh, just a quick note there, if you do double click your program to run it, it bypasses the idle editor and does run it in a slightly different way. So uh, just be aware of that. So now I've saved my program, I can go to the run menu and choose to run it. And if I do that, the output appears in this first window that we looked at. So hello world there is the text output of my program. So Notice in the editor it colour codes things, so my comments are red so that I know they're not going to do anything and uh, different elements of the program uh, appear in different colours, so uh, the print command appeared in orange and text appears in green and uh, variables and other values can appear in different colours too. Uh, it also can suggest syntax uh, like the, uh, the window previously uh, did and also if I make a mistake in my program, so I miss out one of the uh, speech marks for example, and I run that program. Firstly, it'll remind me that I haven't saved it, so I can say OK. But secondly, it'll tell me that there's an error in my program. So the messages that you get aren't always you know, entirely clear, particularly when you're a beginner. But if you click the OK button, it will show you where it thinks the mistake lies. So I can say, oh yes, I've missed out my speech marks, and I can put them back in, and I can run. and I can see that it works. So just to recap, you can type commands straight into here but only one at a time. If you want to start a program you need to go to File and New File and then once you're editing your program you need to save it before you run it and you can run it and see what it does using the Run menu.